destroyer on the horizon coming uh, toward Harrow Strait. And uh, actually, before we even saw it, we heard it. And then we saw the local J-Pod killer whales uh, crowded up against the shore and also moving north away from the vessel. For an extended period of time, these whales stayed near the surface. They didn't go diving and foraging as they had been prior to the ship showing up. And uh, they also came very close to shore. They just kept changing direction all the time as if uh, they were seeking uh, uh, you know, some direction that would be out of this sound field. We were seeing extreme aversion or avoidance of the sounds by the porpoises and whales at 12 to 15 miles from the ship. I was uh, present in the Bahamas in March 2000 when we had uh, a steady population of, of beaked whales mysteriously began swimming ashore and stranding on the beach all within a few hour period. There had been a sonar exercise in the area, and the Navy ultimately admitted that uh, they were the probable cause of these strandings. seems as though it may have been just an extreme avoidance or aversion behavior. The whales are just trying to get away from this incredibly loud, scary sound and painful sound. And uh, they went to the beach and had a lot of problems with their vascular system and hemorrhaging. You know, the Navy needs these systems, so what they need to learn is when and where to practice. Uh, you know, they have to practice nuclear weapon delivery, too, but you don't do it uh, downtown populated areas with people or wildlife. So, you know, first of all, they have to learn when and where, and we can help them do that when they actually are going to conduct an exercise that they ramp up gradually, giving whatever animals they will try to avoid the sound, so give them a chance to get out of the area. These are the Canary Islands. The NATO is exercising. Every ship is equipped with high-powered sonars. They are exercising their hunt for submarines. Five hours later, the first whales are stranding. Ten hours later, it's over. The Navy still refuses to take their responsibility. But the whales are stranding everywhere where they're exercising. Greece, Bahamas, Azores, the list is endless. I cannot imagine a, a time when we would not have to make use of that sort of technology in, uh, in uh, hunting for submarines. Another way it's trends shortly after this press conference.
the gas bubbles are clear indicators for an extreme form of the diving disease, normally never occurring with whales. The Navy promised not to use their sonars within 50 miles, but what happens outside this mitigation zone? Antonio Fernandez found various clear evidences in vital organs. But it's not only the gas emboli, it's also a fat emboli, which is a much more severe evidence of the diving disease. These bubbles in the brain vessels pluck the blood flow and the brain begins to die. At seven they were still alive and here they are already dead. Little has been known about these deep diving whales. They're very shy and stay only 10% of their time close to the surface. But what happens below? Scientists as Mark lock the diving data with computers. So for the first time they can follow them down to minus 5,000 feet. These are first impressions from the deep sea. And this is also the place where submarines are hiding. This is where the conflict starts. Through thermal layers, the sound is floating across hundreds of miles. Nothing can stop the sound to travel long distances. Not only between the islands, but across distances the size of Europe. The sound of the sea uncovers the reasons behind the mass strandings of whales. <laughs> 